So here we see the humerus. The humerus is the third bone we're going to talk about. This here is the articular surface for the scapula. It articulates with the glenoid cavity, creating the glenohumeral joint. If you remove this and this and then look at this bone from the medial point of view, you will notice that it's pretty much cylindrical. This here is the intertubercular groove. And why is it intertubercular? Well, because you have the major tubercle and the minor tubercle. The minor tubercle is forward and the major tubercle is solid posterior. The humerus is a typical long bone. Here it is quite cylindrical and at the lower portion it is somewhat flat. This here is the deltoid tuberosity for the deltoid muscle. And the deltoid tuberosity is bordered by this groove here. That groove is the groove for the radial nerve. Now if we go just a little bit more up, you will see this constriction here. That constriction is called the anatomical neck. The humerus also has the surgical neck. And the surgical neck is basically where most of the fractures happen. That's why it's called the surgical. As a rule, we should also find a nutrient foramen here. If we look at the bone in its lower portion, we will see here the medial epicondyle and here the lateral epicondyle. This one is smaller and this one is larger. We can also find here the sulcus for the ulnar nerve. Funny if you strike your elbow against something while it's flexed, I don't know, on a table or something, it's going to cause a lot of pain here. And this, well, not pretty much pain, but more like an electric shock sensation. And that's going to radiate all the way down to your pinky finger and your, and your fourth finger. And I'm sure everybody experienced that at least sometime. It's, we will see the ulnar nerve right in a minute. And the ulnar nerve should be here. And that's where it's strike. We will show it right after we explain the bone. Another thing that we can see here is this articular surface here. This articular surface is basically the articular surface for the ulna. And this here is the articular surface for the radius. The articular surface for the ulna is called the trochlea. It has this median groove here while the articular surface for the radius is called the capitulum. Once the arm is flexed, this coronoid process of the ulna goes into this coronoid fossa. And of course, because radius is also protruding here a little bit, it can fit into the radial fossa. If we actually go back and look at the bone from behind, we will see here this dorsal surface and we see one more process of ulna entering one more fossa. That is the olecranon process. And the olecranon process enters a very big and deep olecranon fossa. These lessons and models come as part of my software called Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. If you don't want to purchase it, then you can click here to subscribe for free lessons in the future.